So I know many of you are getting ready to graduate this December. First, I just want to congratulate you. Um, secondly, I just want to give you a few tips. But before I get into that, I just want to introduce myself. So my name is Austin Marks. I'm currently a respiratory therapist. I've been in RT for about two and a half, almost three years now. So on my channel, I mainly talk about respiratory therapy. Um, I do have a few other videos talking about a few other things. If you like what you see, make sure you like and subscribe. I'm also the admin of a Facebook group called the RT Club, and on this Facebook group, it's full of respiratory therapists, respiratory therapy students, anyone looking to aspire respiratory therapy. It's kind of where we share everything respiratory. So if you have a question about um, what's going on in your new job or a question respiratory related at all, go ahead and ask it and someone will be happy to answer you. So I'm sure you apply to many hospitals. Um, about two, three months before you were getting ready to graduate and they knew that you were going to graduate, you were going to pass your boards, you were going to do fantastic. Um, so now once you start working, here are some tips I want you to go ahead and do. So first off, ask tons of questions. So you're going to have an orientation period. Um, it's kind of going to be like clinicals in a way. Um, someone's going to be there watching you, making sure you're doing everything correctly, ask tons of questions, make sure you are doing it correctly, um, and make sure that you know where everything is in the hospital. So you're not going to learn everything in two weeks, however, you want to learn where important stuff is. So let's say there's a code in the ER. You want to make sure that you can grab all the stuff um, to make sure that code goes smoothly for you and you're not getting in trouble because you didn't grab capnography, you didn't grab an ET2 holder. You want to make sure you know where your equipment is. Even if you have to make a little list to carry with you for a certain amount of time, go ahead and do that. So there's a difference between being confident and being arrogant. So. If they tell you to do something and you don't really know how to do it, but you just think you know how to do it, you can try it, but make sure you tell the person beforehand, hey, I'm not really sure if I'm going to do this correctly. Can you kind of guide me with it? Can you instruct me? Rather than just saying, hey, I don't really know what I'm doing, but uh, let's, let's go with it. That's a huge no-no, especially in the ICU when you're doing something um, or when you're doing like a intubation assist or even if you're extubating a patient because if you extubate somebody wrong or incorrectly um, they can aspirate and that can be a huge no-no and they can get reintubated again. Um, so make sure that if you don't know something you ask. That kind of goes back to just asking questions in general. Um, so make sure you ask questions and make sure you don't do things on your own that you're not comfortable with doing because we don't want anybody to get hurt and you don't want to have some kind of uh, problem going on within your first week or two of being in the hospital um, because that'll put a huge no-no or a bad reputation on your record and you don't want that. I also just want to tell you that you're fresh out of school, you're not going to know everything, so don't pretend you know everything. Um, I know when I first started seeing somebody go into some kind of respiratory distress, I was like, eh, should we just intubate right away? But that's not always the case because sometimes it can be fixed very easily with BiPAP. Other times you're going to be thinking, oh, let's try BiPAP when that person needs to be intubated ASAP. Um, this is just something that comes with time. Um, I'm sure you're fantastic with AVGs and making vent setting uh, changes but if you don't know what you're doing once again don't be afraid to call somebody up and say hey is this the correct answer or is this what I should do um, so just make sure that you're not overly confident and you ask tons of questions so I also do have another video talking about if you're going to be starting on night shift as a respiratory therapist. I go over all the details and how you can potentially avoid going on night shift. Um, I get a question a lot about if you can be a travel respiratory therapist right away. Um, that's harder to answer because there are some places that will go ahead and accept you right away. But there are many, many places that will not. They generally want you to have one, two years of experience, um, just working in the hospital, working in the ICUs, working in the ER. Because as a traveler, you're in, you should already know what you're doing. You don't have any time for orientation. So that's why they want you to go ahead and be competent in all your skills rather than be fresh new grad right out of school. So um, recapping everything, 
make sure you ask tons of questions, get to know your hospital, get to know all the protocols, make sure that you're actually doing some of the procedures with somebody watching over you while you're on orientation. That way you're not doing it by yourself in two weeks and you have no idea how to do it. Secondly, don't be overconfident or very arrogant, um, especially when you're on your own. If you don't know how to do something, call somebody. Say, hey, um, I don't really know what I'm doing here. Especially like if something as simple as you can't get a blood gas. Let's say you tried a bunch of times and you're just having no luck at all. Call somebody because I know if I was the patient, I'd be pretty mad if someone kept sticking me and they sucked at it. Because we all suck at ABGs in the beginning. Well, anyway, if you enjoyed this video, if you have any more questions, make sure you leave in the comments below and I'll make sure to get back to you.